I think my favorite alien species in Star Citizen, if I had to pick one, if I had to, I love them all. Yeah, uh, I have a deep fondness for the Banu. Like the visual architecture. They just seem like kind of cool critical thinkers. The Xion I'm closest to mentally, meaning I know more about them than all of the others. <laughs> they're like the chill, relaxed ones. Even though they're so friendly, they look like they can pack a punch, you know? So far, the ones that have piqued my interest is the one one. They're the, the predators of the space in our universe. And they look really kind of fierce and ferocious. You know, when you encounter them, um, you know you're in a lot of trouble. But they're alien race. Probably the Vandal. There's no alien ship better than the um, the Talon. Isn't the Talon Tavarin? It is Tavarin, yeah. But the Tavarins themselves, I'm not keen on. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the Vandal, uh, they just tick all the right boxes for me. Alien Week is here, and with it, our annual celebration of Xion, Banu, Tavarin, and even the dreaded Vandal. And if you haven't already, Check out the various contests and activities happening across social on the robertspaceindustries.com website. But for us here at ISC, we thought we'd take this week to dedicate entirely to exploring the current status of the highly anticipated Banu Merchantman. Now, warning, much of it is still in gray box or early white box phase. Still, there's a lot to explore of its mysterious interior. Let's find out more. I think when tackling a ship that's got so many unknowns about it, it's a you know, completely new art style, or it's not something that a lot of the team kind of worked on before. We kind of need to make sure that we're approaching it in the most sensible way we can. All right, so some old thunder. We are jumping in with our devs. Uh, we have got uh, vehicle art director, Mr. Ben Curtis. Hello. Hello. And senior vehicle designer, Mark Gibson. Hello. And we are going to be showing the very real, very current uh, progress of the Banu Merchantman. Before we get into it, let's talk a little bit about where we are uh, in that process. Uh, ben, we know the Banu Merchantman has been in development for a while, and it's not in development. Set this up for us. Where are we at uh, overall? Um, the exterior is going through its gray box pass. Um, so it's looking a little bit more advanced than um, the interior of the ship that we'll see in a bit. Um, we've basically got two artists on it and we kind of chop the ship up into different um, parts that they can work on. And um, we're just going through and making sure that everything that needs to fit in the ship is going to fit in the ship. And it's worth noting that this is a landmark uh, a ship for Star Citizen. This is, this is one of the biggest ships of its kind. Uh, it's got entirely new purposes with the shops and everything inside. It's, it's, it's pushing an, or an alien race into a new size and scale that we've never done with any of the other uh, you know, ships outside of Squadron 42. Uh, there is a lot uh, to this ship. So with that, let's jump on in and start with the exterior. So we've got the entire front with its hidden weapons that come out from there for the pilot control. It's dual docking collars, one on either side. It's wings with the new animation designs for them for how they're actually going to deploy. As you can see, there's a lot of detailing on the wing section, a very elaborate and almost elegant design on it because at the end of the day, this is something they use as a trademark to show how wealthy they are and well they're doing as a trader. That's a lot of detail, even for gray box phase. Yeah, it's a new art style. We, you know, we've done the Defender, obviously, but for the, the UK team, it's, it's a kind of new art style. And also, you know, the Defender is vastly smaller in terms of its size. There's a, our normal kind of approach to how we kind of layer in the details um, has needed a bit of kind of alteration. Um, and we've had to kind of think about how we're going to bring in some of those smaller scale elements to give a better sense of size and scale. Because, you know, when you zoom out from this ship, you still want it to feel huge. And, and you know, it deserves to feel huge. It is absolutely monstrous. Um, so I think, you know, we've, we've had to spend a bit more time working out how we're going to add detail to it there's still a lot to be done there's still a lot of the, the finer details to be added um because that does impact in how we how we model the ship how we make the ship so yeah it's, it's been it's been you know a fun challenge for the artist so far i understand there was a recent change to the animations yep i'll have to go again oh they were very quick 
Oh, the animation is nowhere near a final. It was just to make sure we got it in. <laughs> I think it's okay. a fair disclaimer for this. Absolutely no part of what you're seeing today. Yep. It's fine. I was like, I remember seeing the the uh, Play Blast in Max and they were uh, a little bit, um, felt a bit weightier and a bit sleeker than that. Um, but yeah, there, there is some kind of subtle movement where you know, panels open up um, and they allow for the, the kind of like the rest of the wings to slide in. And, you know, as with everything we do, we make sure that there's not, space magic going on things actually kind of uh fit and function as they should um so yeah you know it gives a few more challenges um but i think the end results is is a much nicer kind of silhouette when you see this thing parked let's move inside and start with the bridge since we're already there okay so um yeah the interior of the ship like i say is is the main um or you're going to see now um is mainly in kind of white box the concept mesh um gave us like a really good starting point um as always with with concept meshes, we had to do you know a fair amount of kind of optimizations and remodeling to kind of get it to the point where we can get it into engine and kind of start walking around it. The the bridge is um, try trying not to say the same thing for every area. It's massive, um, <laughs> and and that, you know you can just any any area of the ship you go into just know that in the back of my head I'm thinking it's huge. Yeah, you know, we've obviously got the kind of like the the four control seats. Mark, do you want to talk through the different functionality stations? Yeah. So uh, as ever, the the Banu don't have captains. They they're a very family communal sort of unit. So it didn't make sense to have a, a primary captain station for the bridge section. In reality, everything would be relatively even. So we have the the pilot seat and control, which obviously with a ship at this scale, it's very difficult to get a good view from the pilot seat to get a good view of what's actually happening so a lot of the animations need to be very alien so that you can get the pilot into a good position so they'd be able to see what they're doing so we, we use a lot of zion tech which lift things up through gravity so they can get this fantastic view out the front so you can see where you're actually going so you've got your primary pilot seat then to the right of them you have your core pilot seat then two stations behind are for the large remote turrets that the ship has for defense. So if you ever need it, people can quickly jump into these seats and get into the action to try and defend you from whatever's happening if it's coming up behind or the sides. Obviously, if it's coming on front, the pilot has more than enough means to be able to deal with it themselves. And if your instinct was to stop the YouTube video and go immediately to comments and say, it's pronounced Sheon, Mark, get a better hobby. Oh, I'll say you'd be correct. <laughs> Directly behind the bridge where the actual operations occur, you have some basic features for if stuff goes wrong. So you have some suit lockers to put emergency suits in, because obviously they're not going to want to go around in their day-to-day -day lives wearing a spacesuit all the time. But if something goes wrong, they do want them to hand. So next to the actual escape pods, you have your suit lockers to quickly get suited and booted, and then be able to get into your escape pod and get out of there if you need to. So they have one on either side, one for each of the actual crew that would be on the bridge, as well as a couple of extra, because leading a little further down, we actually have the, the more habitation side of the ship, but we'll, we'll get to that when we get there. Directly behind, we also have the entryway to get inside the main man turret. This is kind of one of the rooms that we spent a bit of time kind of playing with in white box and making sure we got it right. Um, we really wanted this to kind of feel um, you know, like quite a moment walking into it. Uh, yeah. Go on, Jarris. No, no. It, okay. it, even even in gray box, this is quite a moment here. Yeah, there, there was some really nice bits in the kind of concept where you had these kind of like um, the, these like lit walls, and we tried to kind of pull some of that into. And I think it's almost having that kind of moment of um, uh, like solitude before you kind of get yoinked up into to battle. Um, so it's you know quite a lonely area of the ship. Everywhere else on the ship kind of feels like it's it's built for like like Mark was saying, like the family. Whereas this is kind of very purposeful. You, you know what you're getting into as soon as you walk in that room. And obviously the exterior shell there, when all said would, done, would open up and reveal yeah. you to the outside. Yeah, space. absolutely. So an, an interesting thing about the, the turret, because it, it's probably something people are going to be curious about, is how it actually works, because the, there's no big arm there behind it or anything like that. Once again, it's using alien technology that's keeping it up in place, which is what the plinth is for behind it. And there's an air shield that will be going around the top of here so that when you actually enter the turret, you're not um, venting the entirety of the room. Um, obviously, that does mean that people could try and sneak onto your ship, but 
while you tear its man, that might not be the safest thing for them to do. I love that Xion fight of the navigator tech. Moving down from the actual bridge area, we then move into the sanctuary. So the Banu are known for being very multicultural when it comes to their religious beliefs. So they have a entire area dedicated to worship, to fortune, to hoping that things are going to go well for them or that the next trade deal is going to be a good one. So this is sort of at the end of the Tree of Life, which is how the entire ship's built around. And it makes sense for it to be at the end of the tree because it, it's where everything comes out from. So it was important to, to keep that feel that it runs through the root of the ship. Going off the side of the sanctuary area, we have the med bay, something that people are very curious about where it actually was. Um, it's just off to the side, just behind the bridge, just near where all of the actual habitation is. You have a primary medical care bed, which will do your day-to-day -day actual healing. And then you have recovery beds similar to the ones we have on the Carrick. Now, rather than just being a bed, decide to try something a little different. It's now these pools of healing gel that you'd lie in just to recover from any significant operation that you had. Yeah, I think I think yeah, this was again an excuse to kind of just push the ship away from what we're used to seeing. Um so originally we had like the three beds lined up in here and you know it was functional. It was you know, it still looked good. It was just like, ah, oh, do you know it'd be really nice if, if these you know, if you, you had your operation and then you know you just sink down into that recovery pool and yeah. Ames drippings with goo. Yeah. Exactly. Secretly tucked behind the actual medical section is where the actual medical officer would work. So it, it's his main station as well as storage supplies for whatever medical supplies that he needs. Obviously, at the moment, it's just the back of the bed, but it's where you re do refills on the bed or anything else that you'd need to do. Obviously, the doors across the entire ship are very alien in appearance. So though they they make sense, but at the same time, like you, you, it was very important like, going across this to make everything make sense to the human eye, but at the same time be so different. So you, you immediately recognize it as a door, but once it starts actually animating and doing something, it it feels completely alien. And even doing the general design of the ship, it was important to keep that consistent, something that is easily recognizable, but also completely different to what people expect. Moving on from the shrine area, we move into the recreation and social habitation area. So you've got your food maker, along with areas to actually eat, as well as the actual social area. So People can sit around, talk, plan stuff out. And I think you know, one of the things that we, we try to tackle here is obviously we have very strict metrics for our human characters. And the, the Banu is a, a race are generally a bit taller, a bit larger. Um, so there's that kind of balance between making things um, work for both scales of character and, and making sure that you know, um, we don't end up with, you know, let's say, like, the, the 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 child in the seat. I remember we brought it up in one of the the um the update meetings, and you know the the consensus was well, yeah, this is a Banu ship, and whilst they support all the other races that that we have in our universe, um, ultimately it's their ship, and so things should be made to to their scale. Directly off the habitation area, we have a secondary control for the hangar section. So if someone needs to actually be allowed to enter into the hangar, you have a separate control room to allow you to open up the hang-up doors to permit the additional ship to come in. Once again, the standard doors, but the, the whole animation, all of it's very alien. And obviously, yeah, when we get to kind of final art, we'll dress this up. So it's, it, you know, um, there does look to be some uh, functionality there because we don't want it all to be, um, you yeah, know, space magic. Um, it still needs to feel like there is kind of mechanisms there that are supporting these, these things lifting and, and um, being able to kind of hover and, and float. Coming off the habitation area, we have two staff lifts. So these ones would be specifically for the staff to allow them to move around the ship a lot easier. Um, we'll, we'll come back to them later because there's a, a better point to show them, but they just give you more access. Just because of the size of the ship, we needed to have multiple ways to get up and down. Otherwise, if you want to get from one part to another, you'd have to run the entire length of the ship, go down the floor to run the entire length again. So we added multiple ways to move up and down between the ship. So 
At the rear here, we have the staff, uh, sorry, we have the crew specific lift. This has access to all of the floors, unlike the customer lift. This is the passenger entrance area. So the lift uh, will go to this floor for all of the passengers, which then gives them a little foyer area before they enter whatever floor they're on. We have the meeting area. So this is the conference room where important delegates would come to discuss significant trade negotiations rather than I'm going buying a power plant, I'm going to buy fuel. This is where serious conversations and serious negotiations go. Yeah, this has got like a really nice view out over the, um, like the cargo hold as well, doesn't it? Yep. To the side of the actual meeting and delegation room, we have the VIP suites. So obviously your VIP delegates are going to want something a bit nicer, a bit more special when it comes to where they're resting. So they have their own private chambers so that they can rest and relax and freshen up before they actually go do any significant meetings. And again, this this, this sort of room highlights um, a lot of the, uh, I guess, the shape language and the difficulties on the ship is that they're, they're, you know, everything's curved, everything flows, and, and there is that kind of like, real kind of like leading um shapes that kind of like lead you through the ship as opposed to you know what we're so used to on, on a lot of our uh, human manufacturer ships whereas you know everything's hard and, and angled and flat um really the only thing in this ship that's flat is the floor so the negotiation table has one seat at the top for the actual mediator which obviously would be a member of the crew and then even number of seats on either side for the delegates to have their discussions from the actual meeting room you get a fantastic view of the cargo hold where all of your goods would actually be stored as you can see the amount of cargo that the ship holds is colossal and just the sheer volume of it gives you this cavernous cathedral-like view of being stuck in the rafters of a, a warehouse worth of stock yeah it gives you a real sense of how tall the ship actually is uh, when we get to the the, the market um you kind of get a glimpse at that, but it's not until you get into somewhere like this that spans the whole, or not even the whole height, you've got the hangar above the, the height of this, um, the, the, how, how big the ship actually is. Well, we're not going to be able to go through every single room and nook and cranny today. This is too big a ship. So let's go to the market now and take a look at that. So I think um, yeah, this is what a lot of the kind of customers are going to see when they first walk into the ship. It's this sort of like reveal um, of the market area. And what we tried to do in, in, in this area is um, kind of, Everywhere you walk into it, you're kind of um, walking through a, a small tunnel or you know, quite a tight space so that when you kind of do walk into it, it does then open up and you can see that sort of like that that grandeur and that height of the ship. And, you know, this is only two out of, I think it's five or six floors at this point of, of you know, the, the part of the ship you're in. Um, but I think it's just a nice kind of like reveal of the the, the overall kind of, uh, again, just repeating that that size and that verticality that, that we see in the other areas of the ship. Um, I think we've already shown a lot of the concept art of this area already, um, but the idea here is that you've got this, you know, hollow in the middle that will kind of, you know, will allow um, the the uh, the traders to kind of show off some of their um, items that might not fit in the shops or might be, you know, too valuable to place in the shops. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a very exciting area of the ship. This part. Okay, and the last area we want to show you today is is kind of the area that we spent a little bit more time on. It's a little bit further along. We tried to take some areas and push their visuals so we've got a good understanding of, of how much work's involved and you know what the kind of like the final ship is actually going to look like um because it is such a large ship and there's going to be a lot of people ultimately working on it i think it's good to have that kind of key area that you can kind of refer to as, as you know yeah this this is what the merchantman's all about and whilst each area of the ship will have its own feel will have its own kind of uh style and in its own forms um, I think this is a good indication of um, the kind of elegance. And you know, if you imagine this is the crew area and the uh, guest area is going to be a level above this, um, I think it gives you a good idea of, of what we're aiming for. The other thing is with the Banu, they're, they're very communal in how they actually live their lives. So it didn't make sense to have separate quarters or separate captain's quarters because that's just not how they live. And getting the, the, the social pit, for them to be able to sit around and talk and relax and socialize it, it, it was an important thing to make sure that we got in um the space needed to feel fine and elegant but also homely and that's pretty much where we're up to with the banning merchantman at the moment um this is 
kind of as hot off the press as it comes. There's a lot of areas of the ship we've not shown yet. We're really happy with the, the progress we've made so far, but at the moment we are kind of at that point where we've got a, a skeleton crew just kind of working out everything that we need to get done to deliver the ship. When time permits, we'll be able to ramp that up and bring bring on more of the team to kind of get through the amount of work that's, that's involved. Super excited with where it's up to. I think it's going to be one of those that kind of stand out, one of those Hallmark ships that kind of defines what Star Citizen is. It shows that there's more to our universe than single-seater fighters and, and the likes. So what did we learn this week? Well, she may not look like much just yet. It still has a long journey ahead of her. But if the Banu Defender before her is any indication, and given its sheer size and scale, the Banu Merchantman seems like it's going to shape up to be a landmark ship for Star Citizen when all is said and done. And as part of Alien Week, there are also these rad new paints available for select ships that you can see here. So check those out if, you know, looking sweet as all heck is something you're interested in. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. We're still here on the eighth floor of the Manchester Goods Yard building, the second floor of the upcoming new UK office, and this is where I'm told CR's office is going to be when he visits. Also this weekend was the first International Bar Citizen Weekend, so here's some imagery from the gatherings near studios around the world. And don't forget to let us know on social where your events are being held at, as we're going to be sending folks to select locations throughout the remainder of this year. We'll see you all next week.